Every Sunday, side by side at the microphone for the green light to the speed trap. Greg Reno and Jody calls them as they seize them, and you better believe them. Here, relevant news, biased opinion, and outright nonsense regarding every aspect of automotive culture. Gas with mechanical trickery never before broadcast over FCC regulated airwaves. Thrill to the explosive tension as Ray and Joe cuss each other down track. Barrel roll across the finish line, laughing at certain disasters as they shake hands. <laughs> All that and so much more at high noon this Sunday on the Motor Mouth Radio Hour. Call in and speak live with the wizards of speed and the live eat, Ray Carino and Joe D. Bring the whole family, kids under 12, get in free. Every Sunday at noon on WHBC. Take the Hempstead Turnpike to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway side. Go right on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all-day parking includes pit pass. No sticker for you. All righty. As you can see, we're in a transition mode here in Motormouth Radio today. Home of Long Island's only auto talk show with your host, Ray Guarino, co-host and compatriot Joe D. Yeah, I'm Data just in the cloud. Up the desk right about now. <laughs> we're just, we're just uh, surfer, surfer stomping our way into oblivion today. Yeah. Joe, here we go. This is, uh, what can I say? It's just everything is going to be new. Give us a call, 516 572 7440. They changed the board. I mean, I th- yeah. Well, it looks like a damn computer system. A lot of stuff has changed. I, I, I hate engineers. Engineers just love to change things. <laughs> but. No. Um, I, I we'll figure it out. Okay, we'll just have to apply Joey's rule number one. Which is, is anything going to explode if we try it? No? Then do it! That's what I do. There Probably you go. Not. I mean, we'll find out. And listen, listen, I've used the fire extinguisher before, so, you know, we can we can put out the fire. Yeah, Ray runs fire. the fire extinguisher, I run the mop. Yeah. So we've got pretty much both ends covered, uh, depending on what it is that's going to befall us. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, I, like, so far, so good. Uh, I see it's charged up from after the last time. Uh, they, uh, the photon crystals are in there, in there correct? Uh, good. Now we just got to see if, uh, like, like I said, see if anything explodes. So um, let's see. What do we got going on today? Are we talking to uh, each other or what? Tim's doing a happy dance. It oh, worked. that's excellent. Sean, if you're listening, it worked. Yay. All right. Hey, LaGrange is up there by ZZ Top. That's good, too. I like that. All right. So, I wasn't saying the artist. Hey, well, uh, okay. I wasn't saying the artist. Thanks, Kim. <sighs> yeah, Kim, the whole place is being reworked here. You're a whiz. Thank you, my dear. Uh, so, uh, basically, we're going to be talking to each other today? Yeah, I was trying to get a guy that we had on the Thursday night show. We had um, on the uh, uh, Plane and Traffic show. It was a fellow from BMR Suspension. A guy named uh, Pete. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked at their website after you mentioned that to me. They got some yeah. cool stuff there, yeah. I sent him an email the following day. I, I told him that, well, we did a marathon that night. We The show usually goes from 9 to 10. Usually by 10, 20, 10, 30, the lose are ready to bang out because they, they work early. This right. time, no one had to work the next day, so we stayed on till like, uh, it's getting close to 11. And I told him, hey, guys, a lot of times you guys have left and left it with me and said, Stay on as long as you want, but they're going to cut you off at 10.30. Shut the the lights when you're done. Lock up. And I told them, no, I've been here till 11. They didn't kick us out. Well, we stayed. We came around to the midnight hour. Wilson Pickett was on with us that night. Ah. And I said, hey, look, we're still here at midnight. It's still recording because they record on Facebook Live as well. Right, right, right. We were there till 12.30. Damn. I mean, we were getting, like, punchy. (laughs) Yeah, I I can understand that. I think, uh, I'm trying to remember. Sometimes I try to see you guys on the phone while I'm I'm still out playing yeah. and working and the last hour work, was yeah. all political rant we really got down and dirty uh, we okay Santiago did, but, uh, <laughs> so so pete was on so it's I, not just cars folks no and, and i said to him listen if you I <coughs> invited him onto the radio show and said you're certainly welcome on the uh, on here sure and i sent him an email the following day with the information and i you know i was hoping he'd get back to me and he didn't so it just uh well, maybe he actually sleeps till a civilized hour yeah, unlike maybe. some of us maybe I mean, you well, know. Well, had Friday and Saturday. So. Right, yeah, okay, yeah. So in which case, maybe he's just hungover. <laughs> so we'll see. But BMR Performance, they do a lot of stuff, uh, kind of the same things along the line of performance suspension uh, along Global West and Hotchkiss, all of that stuff. They do front-end stuff, rear-end stuff. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. face it. That that stuff these days, you know, modern suspension systems are, uh, you know, modernizing 
all the cars is, is definitely uh, a trend. Right. And sometimes for good reason, because I know sometimes when I get out of, uh, say, an older car, you know, a stock older car, even though it's in good shape, like the Chevelle comes immediately to mind, you forget what it's like, and then you get in, into a, into a modern car, and you feel like you're driving... You're driving a jet, you know. You oh, drive, yeah. you know. It, it's just amazing what the difference is, and to put some of that modern stuff in, as long as you, you know, uh, into a into a cool looking older body, is definitely is definitely something to do if you drive your car a lot. The funny thing is, I I was explaining to these guys, I threw out to them the problem I was having with this Camaro I'm working on at the shop. Oh yeah, you, hadn't been resolved yet, and they all had other ideas, great ideas. And right. Pete said, "Listen, call me in the morning." I got everything you need for that car, meaning all the new stuff. Oh, yeah. I said, well, we haven't gotten the okay to go there yet, but we do have the okay, Joe, to go to the phone. Okay, push the button, see what happens. And say hi, you're all the motor mouths. Hey, good morning, it's the Bronx. How are you guys doing today? All ah, right. jeez, I thought we had everything fixed. Right. No, nope, I'm going to make it all broke again. How's that sound? <laughs> How you doing, right, Bronx? One more time out. Well, finally got a little breather out here. They just finished Hot August Nights. And, you know, I just heard you talking about suspension and modernized suspension on the old cars. And I'm seeing more and more of the cars out here. I don't know if you guys would get them. The early 70s to mid-70s where they're putting these 22s, 24-inch wheels, jacking them up. Yep. Right? And it's becoming a whole new fad. Uh, Excuse me. A whole new fad. Yes. Of, uh, I guess they're like 40-year-olds that are doing this at this point. Right. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't like it. I'm sorry. You know, yeah, I, the cars are not designed... Uh, from the aesthetic point of view, to fit these modern rims that they're putting on these low riders and stuff. So it's just crazy. I don't know. I don't I, get I'll it. tell you so, this. On, on my own car, on my 65 Pontiac, uh, as I was approaching the build stage, I said, you know what? I'm not falling prey to the modern technology and the big wheels. I'm, I'm going to stick with like 15s and 14s, and, and that's it. Right. Well, now it's harder to find the wheels and the tires. I ended up going with 17s. Right. Right. And I got to say, I'm really happy I did because, boy, did that give me a whole other world of, of technology. Select, yeah, a whole other selection. And unfortunately, anything less than about 16 inches. Like 16s and a new, like 14s. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you can't even buy a 14 anymore. I don't know if they still make them. And uh, yeah, you don't they, see any cars it's tough have come, to come out by. with 14s and 15s. Everything is, uh, you know, multi-size now. 16s in the front, 17s in the back, 17s in the front, 18s in the back. Right. It's all different. It's a whole different world, as you were saying. With the change in suspension systems, you have to change the rubber on the ground, too, to make the system work together. And they see a lot of these guys are not doing that. All right, they're not, they're mismatching. That's for lack of a better term, not doing the research or talking to knowledgeable people like you guys. They're going to put you in the right direction. So when you put the system together, it's put together right, and it's going to work right the first time. Rather than say, "Oh, why doesn't this? Why does this? Why does that?" That kind of thing. I mean, having worked in a, in, a, in a auto shop many years ago, I mean, wheels was. I remember people bringing their cars, depending on their, their what kind of car it was and their mechanical ability, they bring their cars from like the dealership, like the next day, and they would order a set of <laughs> spokes or, uh, or or Craigers or something like that. Like wheels is like one of those things that, like, if you don't know much, that you know, you just go and you fling money at somebody, and the next thing you know, your car is all cool looking, so on and so forth. And unfortunately, that that, uh, that trend does continue today. People put these big Falutin, you know, rims on there with like, like just it looks like a rubber band around the outside. Yeah, and exactly, that's all it is, right? <laughs> you know, right. Uh, you know, it's like when we were building cars, you know, back sixties, seventies, eighties, that kind of thing. All right, you had your choice: am I going to put a, a fifteen seven, or am I going to go oversized a fifteen eight? And do I have clearance in the back for a fifteen ten? Right. And there really, wasn't much yeah. that you could choose from. Uh, because they didn't have the front-wheel drive cars, which is a completely different rim from the rear-wheel drive cars. So, like, one rim, they had the Unilugs, remember that? Oh, Where yeah. it'll fit a Ford, a Pontiac, no, it'll no fit a Chrysler, lugs. that kind yeah. of thing, mm. just by changing the lug nut and the spacer. Right. So it's very easy to do a modification on your suspension system without getting crazy. You want to jack the car up, you put a set of heavy springs in, or you put a lift kit in, you know, the spring spaces. Air shocks. Now, Shackle world, extenders. Right? Or you put air shocks in, right? or, or whatever you're putting in to give you the ride that you want. Or better yet, it was more of the look rather than the ride back in those days. You know, on, yeah. the, on the coil spring cars, you didn't see it, but on the, on the Mopars, how many Mopars were you behind that had like eight inch shackles right. and the Gabriel right. hijackers on extenders? Right. right. Yeah, and, and then uh, crank up the torsion bar. You get uh, under yeah. there and you just crank that torsion bar up so the nose <laughs> would pop up. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that, that's. Or leave it low and put 90 tens in. World. Right, so... Uh, yeah, there's a lack uh, of thought behind everything. 
you know, these yeah, days. They well, just slap the wheels on. Too. I mean, we used to go out. Uh, there was a spring place right by the old Shea Stadium. I forget the name of it. Flush and Water Spring. they put in heavy-duty coils for twenty nine ninety five. Yeah. I remember that place. I, Bad and caused under. I can't remember the name of the place for the life of me. So we drive over. It's Flush and Water Spring, Bronk. I lived in Whitestone. We were, oh, I was so there. I was the there every like two weeks with a different car. Right? Yeah. 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 Right. Back so there, it looks like Mad Max back, back there. Who had a coil spring compressor back then? Mm. <laughs> so it was easy to do. They give you the springs. They do the labor, and then I think it was what ten, twelve bucks to get an alignment. After that, I forget. You know. Wow. But well, it, de- it depends. Crazy. Well, they charge you extra if they had to get a, a longer uh, roll of string. Yeah. You know, to pay if you had a <laughs> exactly. wi- if you had one of like <laughs> wide track Pontiacs or something. Yeah, right. No, I remember the place very good. It was like in an old like airplane hangar. So it was one of them Quonset hut like arched over things there. Yeah, yeah. there yeah, was yeah, him yeah. and there was Axel and over in Long Island City. Saturday, the line was down the block around the corner, and you just wait there to get it done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, that, now you can't do that. So let, let me ask you this, Brock. Let me ask you this: with your cars, your older cars, who do you go to for things like alignments now? Uh, there's a tire shop up here. It's a Les Schwab. The guy is about 62 years old that does the old school. Robin the Cradle. Mm. Right? Okay. And uh, the guy is amazing. He just did my Corvette, four wheel limit on the Corvette. At 80 miles an hour, I can let go of that steering wheel and the thing will track beautifully. And I checked them. I did it the old fashioned way. I poured water on the front tire and uh, I poured water on the rear tire. And it went perfectly straight to see what my overlap was. Okay. And it was right on target. Okay. Rock steady. And he charged me for the four wheel alignment uh, 79 bucks. That's great. That's they, darn, I mean, that's darn reasonable. Anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to this one shop uh, that my parts guy recommended. And uh, it was a young kid there. Right? So I said, well, here's the specs. Because I gave him the, uh, the old specs. And he goes, uh, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> said, okay. <laughs> But at least he was honest about right. it. Exactly. Right. Right? And told me. And then I found this guy, and I've been using him, I guess, the last three, four years. Uh, I just finished doing the Mustang, the 67 Mustang, because those things are a bad steer. They're all over the road. You know, mm. they're, they're flopping steer. And uh, I put in urethane, tightened up the suspension on it, put in a better set of shocks. I realigned the sway bar, because the thing was pulling to the right. And mm-hmm. this thing... It handles beautifully. So to nice. find an old timer, the old cars, you got to find somebody who grew up on this stuff. You can't go to these kids because they never worked on these cars, right? But the question is, what's a set of points? What's a distributor? I mean, that kind of thing. Mm. You know, well, how do you modify an ignition wire? What's an ignition wire? <laughs> uh, different world, different world. You know, so well, be yeah. Where you go. There are some kids out there that uh, do hang around with a couple of us old guys, and we, I know, mm. I've been teaching a few of them. You know, that, that, that are in the shop and whatever, because for some ungodly reason, they show up at my shop and like, oh, what is this, Jurassic Park? You know, like when, <laughs> one, one week it's a 68 Cougar, another week it's like a 67 Caddy, you know what I mean? Right. And, and uh, like like last week it was a 79 Z28, which pff, <laughs> I remember when that was a new car. Uh, right. A friend of mine selling his 89 Z28 convertible. Ah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's old school, that kind of thing, but it's injected, but nothing fancy about it. It's still an easy car to work on. Right. But they don't, they don't, they don't understand. Like, when, mm-hmm. what do you mean I have to, I had to do a distributor in it? What do you mean I yeah, have to mark the, yeah. yeah I, what does I, it look like? <laughs> and you can take it out? Yeah. Right. And yeah, oh, wow. why do you, why do you <laughs> mark the, why are you marking the rotor? What's timing? Right. I have to go pull mm-hmm. the timing light out. Oh, by the way, the, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, my 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 tool there that we tried to use on you go a couple weeks ago. Yeah. If you smack it three times on the left side, it works. I hadn't oh, tried. Oh, yeah. Old snap on induction light. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, actually, this one's got attack and dwell and cylinder kill built into right. it. Besides my my trusty oh. red dial type too. Which, yep, I got an old Craftsman uh, attack and dwell and voltmeter. Yeah. Right. An old analog. It probably goes back to the 60s. It's one of the right. original ones I owned. And I got the old snap one. I got to do the same thing. I got to smack it or hold it in a certain position for it to strobe. Yeah. You could never sell that, though, because nobody else reads Latin, right? That's right, right. right nobody knows. What is it? You know, <laughs> where, where do you put the bullets? Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. So it's yeah, fun. yeah. Okay, now that you convinced me that I'm friggin' ancient and I really should be in a rocking right. chair someplace. I tell you what, I... Think I, of it this way. If you think you're ancient, what am I at this point? Yeah. You're, uh, you're going to be sitting there drinking coffee in a minute because we're going to go take our first break. 
Yeah, and we gotta go break doing, something. And I got a, a dirt bike in the garage that I'm doing a conversion on a suspension on a mono shock. I'm changing the mono shock because the guy's a little short, so I gotta lower it no. and putting a street legal kit in. So I got that all in pieces in the garage, nice. and that's my play toy for today. So that's very good. Keep me out of